What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Alpha's Creed podcast. Today, I got a real badass motherfucker on the podcast today, okay, guys? Um, and like I said, normally I, I kind of give you guys a bio or kind of give you guys a little rundown of who my guest is. But I, as I've told you guys recently in the last probably few weeks, I've been getting away from that because I feel like I butcher it. I feel like I butcher it because when I want, I want you to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. I want you to get it directly from them because when I give a bio, I don't really, you know, in, in capsule, encapsulate, you know, the, the passion behind who this person is. So I'm going to let my guest today introduce herself and we're going to dive deep in. But I tell you what, everybody take notes because just from the conversations we've had, from what I know and from what she's accomplished, and I just gave it a little bit away. You do not do these things unless you are a badass motherfucker. And I can't wait to find out why. Thanks for coming on today. Thank Appreciate you for it. having me. So Tracy Cortez, <laughs> yes. right? Again, I don't want to introduce you, you know, do the introduction <laughs> for you because I used to do that. Like yeah. I, tell, I tell everybody, I used to do that and I feel like I would butcher it, right? I would like kind of read off a bio or something yeah. like that. But you know what? It just, it doesn't have the power of like what I want to hear from you, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So as I ask every, every guest and I will always ask every guest, what the hell is your story? Like who <laughs> the hell is Tracy Cortez? Give, give us a rundown. Yeah, Tracy Cortez, I fight for the UFC. Mm. Currently undefeated in the UFC. Undefeated in the undefeated UFC. I told UFC. you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> yeah, undefeated in the UFC. Uh, and you're 29 years old, I'm, super I just, young. I just turned 29 in yeah. December. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm 25. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, mm. you know, I'm just a Latina chasing mm. her dream. Okay. So yeah. let's let's really dive into this. Undefeated in the UFC, mm. right? Uh, you're from Arizona, correct? Yeah, born and raised. Okay. Let's really just get into the weeds because that, that's yeah. that's who you are. Yes. But what's your story? How Ooh. the hell did you get to this point? How the fuck did you end up becoming an undefeated mm. UFC fighter, right? That is not something that, I mean, like what, what percent of the world can even say that? Yeah. I mean, think about that. There are 8 billion people on this planet. A lot of people love fighting. Fighting is a worldwide sport. Right. Yeah. I mean, especially because, you know, you're Latina, you're Mexico, you. right? Yes. Very popular in Mexico. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of people who dream of doing that. But what percentage of people actually get to accomplish that dream or even get yeah. to live that dream? What the hell <clears throat> happened in your life that got you to this point? What's your story? A lot of uh, uh, sad to say, mm. but a lot of tragedies. OK. A lot of tragedies. Mm -hmm. uh but starting off from a young age, I grew up with three big brothers, mm. three older brothers. Uh, back in the day, you know, in, in 2000, like early 2000s, mm -hmm. super traditional, like what life back then isn't what it is now, mm. you know. Uh, Did you grow up in Arizona with your I, brothers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they all there. wrestled. Okay. Both mm -hmm. parents were immigrant parents. They came from Mexico across mm -hmm. the border on first generation mm. in the States. Awesome. Living the dream. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh Coming from three big brothers and me being the youngest and only female, mm. I didn't understand why they treated me so differently. How so? Yeah. You know, so they would go outside and play. Ah. Uh, oh, I want to mm. go. No, no, no. Get inside. Mm. Get inside. Wash mm. the dishes. What? <laughs> I didn't even eat. They ate. Yeah, you right, know. Yeah. Right. Uh, little things like that, or mm. hey, the weekends they'll go out to the movies or go to mm. the wrestling practices or. Just do activities, child, mm -hmm. kid activities, mm -hmm. and I wasn't allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. And was people, that, people think I'm being extra, but when right. I say I was not allowed to leave the house, uh -huh. it was school, uh -huh. home, yeah, no friends. I couldn't have friends. What? I, yeah. Was this your parents, or your brothers, or both? Everybody. Okay. Why? Wait, and, what? I, I, I don't know. They didn't trust. I wasn't allowed to spend the night at friends' houses. They were just. I was so sheltered. Uh -huh. I was extremely sheltered. Uh -huh. Um. I, yeah, when I say sheltered, I mean sheltered. Yeah. They took care of me. I was the baby. Uh -huh. it w you know, we had to keep her pure for marriage and for children uh -huh. and be a housewife uh -huh. and just traditional, you yeah. know, Mexican woman. Right. Uh, and I turned out to be the black sheep of the. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. That, that, the that, black sheep. No, I really did. Really? Yeah. Okay. The, you know, my brothers, all state champions. Really? Uh, year after all year. All three of them? Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry, incredible. except for one. He got okay. he got second. Oh, the, the middle one. That's still incredible. Yeah, but yeah. the the oldest and and the youngest of the brothers, all you know, three time, four time state champions, mm. and then there's me, and they all graduated, went to college, mm. and then there's me that high school dropout, you know. Oh. At I 
my mom took me out, I want to say, like, mid-junior year. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? My brother was going through a cancer. Oh, and he was, no. yeah, he was, so I started rebelling at a young age. Uh-huh. I want to, and, and, I, and I mean young. Yeah. How young? I, it's like seventh grade. I don't even know what, what age that is. You're rebelling in seventh grade. Yeah, huh? seventh that? grade. Yeah, like 12 years old kind of thing, yeah. 13 years old. Smoking yeah. weed, ditching school. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, I was fucking up. <laughs> okay. I, like, I was, when I said I was the black sheep for years, uh-huh. I was fucking up. Mm. Um, and then life kind of went a little blurry because my brother was going through chemo. Mm. Um, my dad was never home. He was a truck driver. Oh, my shit. My mom worked from five to five for the city of Phoenix, uh-huh. which is admirable. Yeah. Immigrant woman yeah. now working for the city of Phoenix, right, you know, like, yeah. you know, like my mom was a hardworking woman. Yeah. And I think that's where my drive comes from uh-huh. as well. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Fast forward, got into high school, still experimenting with drugs, hanging out with the wrong group of kids. Yeah. And I mean wrong, like hanging out at the park, getting shot out, shot, shot at from other gangs and, uh-huh hearing the bullets fly by and I'm just sitting there just clueless about life, yeah. careless. Uh-huh. And um, my mom, she saw me, took me out of school. Mm. And then the entire, my entire family got so mad at her. Mm. You know, we had a family meeting. They, they got mad at her for pulling you out of school? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. They're, uh, they wanted to send me to like military school and mm. just send th- their easiest thing for them to do with me was send me away Ship you off, yeah. right mm-hmm. but i i mean if i like i remember correctly like they never once asked me like mm-hmm. how are you doing how are you going through this mm-hmm. you know what i mean and i was seeing my brother die and he went like if you find pictures of my brother he was just fit mm-hmm. he was like hulk to me mm-hmm. and i saw him go from like that superhero to mm-hmm. just very depleted mm-hmm. And it took a toll on me and something that I, 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 I'll always, because my mom passed away too. Oh, I'm Five sorry. years after my brother passed away. From uh, what cancer. Wow. Yeah. Bo- you had two people in your family pass away from cancer. Five years apart. Oh, shit, man. Yeah. Yo, jeez. Yeah, she was the only one that really, like, talked to me, spoke to me. She mm-hmm. was the one that understood me. Like, that woman believed in me and she was like, man, you have potential. And mm-hmm. your brother was fighting for his life and you're killing yours mm. and that one hit me yeah i was just like holy shit mm. like i'm fucking my, like i'm fucking up yeah you know especially because m- my brother was my hero mm. you know still is to this day mm-hmm. they asked me like oh who do you admire who do you look look up to my brother mm. you know he fought with the grape size fruit tumor in his heart it's like who grape size great a huge tumor in his heart oh wow huge shit and if you look if i have that video on my phone but if yeah. we were to look at it you could just see him like yeah he went from a cardio machine to just first round couldn't even get past it yeah still we, one but yeah. cancer is one of the most i i, I don't even know how to describe it because my, my wife you just met her right um, yeah her father just st- passed away from, <sighs> from cancer as well wow. and to watch it i mean what you're describing is like we just we watched it too to watch yeah. their body just it's horrible to please it's 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 undescribable almost until you've actually seen it someone you care about someone you love and to watch it happen to them you know yeah. it's like oh shit i mean like i don't even know how to describe cancer because it's just I, it's like you just want to fucking you hate it so yeah much, you, you know, know like, and, and you can't it's one of those things where i've had friends that have told me that are now dealing with what i went through and mm-hmm. said man i didn't understand you until mm-hmm. now yeah you know, I had, I had, uh, I I'm not gonna say his name, but uh, uh, an acquaintance, mm-hmm. right? That I know his son just passed away, mm-hmm. and he shot me a message and he said, "You know what, Tracy? I I never understood you, and I always thought you were doing the most." Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, until he said, "I see my son now and how he's grieving for his big brother," mm-hmm. and that just hit me. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's unfortunate that people don't, they, you just can't understand it unless you go through it. Yeah. You know, it's, right. it's sad. It's yeah. a sad thing. Right. I mean, now, I mean, now you're talking, you're not just your brother, but also your mother. Yeah. You know? So two family members passed away from cancer. What was that like for you? So I was 15 when my brother passed away. Mm. He, uh, his body just shut down on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he passed away in, in my arms mm-hmm. and it was, it was, tra- it was traumatic mm-hmm. to this day. I, I mean, I could still see his face, mm-hmm. you know, it was, it was a traumatic thing and. 
life that happened and I still it's it, I hate to say this but even then I didn't appreciate life mm. the way I do now yeah although I saw someone dearly close to my heart fighting for life mm. I didn't appreciate it or cherish it the way I do now mm-hmm. you know yeah well I mean uh, it's 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 the dichotomy of life itself. You yeah. cannot know joy without uh, experiencing sorrow. Yeah. And the truth is, the more sorrow you experience, the more joy, the more capacity for joy you're able yeah. to feel. You know, because yeah. there cannot be light without darkness. Literally, like it, there cannot there cannot be a mixture. There's no in between. It's either light or it's dark, mm-hmm. right? And there cannot be joy if you've never had sorrow. And that's why it's 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 one of the most incredible, incredibly. Oh, it's one of the hardest things ever to describe to somebody or talk to somebody, especially when they're going through is, is losing somebody is one of the fastest, is one of the best ways for you to enjoy every minute of your life. Yeah. But it's also sad sad because you see stories and I'm, I, I, you know, my personal, Mm -hmm. um, life families also fall apart Mm -hmm. when people pass away. Yes. Yeah, they can. Through to some nasty things, whether it's greed or they're just grieving different, yeah. or it's just my family fell apart. I know mm-hmm. that. You know, my brother yeah. was the tree trunk of of our family, and the glue. yeah. Mm-hmm. And when he passed away, mm-hmm. like my one brother became really angry, and we just couldn't talk to him. The other one kind of just distanced himself, mm-hmm. real sad. Yeah. My dad started working more as a truck driver. Was never home. Mm-hmm. My mom dealing with all of us and. Then and then me yeah. fucking up, doing mm-hmm. drugs, sneaking out, coming back. My parents seeing me blacked out in yeah. the doorstep because my friends leave or uh-huh. friends at the time left right, me there. Right, yeah. So I I turned. It was in December. It's crazy uh-huh. I remember because it was right after I, I was partying for my seventeenth birthday and got home. And then like a week or two later, at seventeen, my dad caught me sneaking into the house. Uh-huh. But at that time, I, w- I only snuck out to go help a friend because mm. they were too drunk and they couldn't. They Like, I'm a writer. Mm-hmm. Always have been. I'm loyal mm-hmm. to a fault. So if someone ever needs me, mm-hmm. I go so much out of my way for them. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So I remember I was 17. They said, hey, I need a ride. His name was Edgar at mm-hmm. the time. I was like, all right, man, I'll, I'll go pick you up. Mm-hmm. Take you home. Came back home. I opened the fucking door mm-hmm. and my dad's making a <laughs> a sandwich in the kitchen mm. and uh right then and there he goes get the fuck out like mm. you're not allowed back in this house mm. and then me being the rebel that i am you know me and my dad never had the best relationship yep. i was like i'm out bye mm. and i never went back mm. never went back how old were you when that happened 17 so that was all around the same time school everything happening mm-hmm. if, if you don't mind me asking then your brother passes away when you're 15 mm-hmm. right and then sounds like things kind of escalated from there for you where like obviously you know like there's a you know you're you know going through it before then but once your brother passed passed away things escalated for the worst would yeah. that be an accurate statement yes why why do you think that is like why do you think cuz you know we're talking about like, you know valuing life more you know if you're out doing those things mm-hmm. you know i think it now especially with your at looking back now that's not really the way to live life mm-hmm. right so why do you think at that time you turned to the reb- rebellion and uh, yeah well after your brother you know passed away you know at the time i want to say it was just me mm. but where i'm at now and looking back at life it's one of those things where it was like i was just so naive mm-hmm. i was young i was naive i was um you think it stemmed below from insecurities and stuff like that yeah and, mm-hmm. uh not so much insecurities just still because again my, my family sheltered me mm. you know so i didn't know what the world world was like mm-hmm. i just knew that I could sneak out and party, mm-hmm. have a good time, dance, drink, do whatever the fuck it is that I'm doing, mm-hmm. and come back home and I have a roof over my head. Mm. You know, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I was I, I, I was very naive. I was very almost taking it for granted. Maybe. Very much yeah, taking it right. for granted. Yeah. Um, not I I I wasn't appreciative. Mm-hmm. I didn't appreciate my mom's work ethic. I didn't see my mom struggle from an immigrant living in the projects to where we were at now with. Mm-hmm a stable home, stable income. She's working for the city of Phoenix. Like mm. it's just everything, you know, I, I, I didn't see life. I was just young. Mm. You know, yeah. I didn't take any accountability. Yeah. I don't know what kid at that age does, but mm-hmm. you know, I mean, well, honestly, mm. so, like usually when kids are sheltered, right, this is t- typically what happens, you know, like when they're sheltered, because 
as human beings, we are we we want to struggle, mm-hmm. right? We know that's the only way to grow. It's almost miserable to not, right? Yeah. Um, and so through that, we t- you know that's why you know the you know the families who you know you know shelter their kids, you always have those you know rebellious children because naturally in life you have to struggle. Like you didn't see your parents struggle to get here to come to America, right? Yeah. Because and then they made the best life they could for you, right? To try and shelter you and mm-hmm. you know keep you from what they saw the outs in the outside world. But in all reality, that was, you know, like they wanted to do what's best for you. But that was a mistake because you had to see the world and you had to understand the world and go through it. Right. Absolutely. I mean, because how else would you grow? Absolutely. How else would you become who you're supposed to become if you just stayed at home doing dishes? Yeah. I mean, seriously. Right. But you you see, I see it all the time. Like I have friends that are doing exactly what. Mm-hmm. You know, so this what? How do you say the word? St- so statistics. Statistics. The, yeah. Yes, I can't say. Statistics. The Latina. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, yeah. uh, they're doing. You know, they have kids. They're married. Mm-hmm. They're at home. Mm-hmm. They're st- they're they're living that life that mm-hmm. was supposed to be meant for me as well. Right. right. Um, but so, you know, getting kicked out at seventeen and me being all stubborn. Mm-hmm. I mean, still kind of am stubborn, but now I'm able to admit and 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 navigate. Okay, you know what. This is my ego. This is my pride. Let mm-hmm. me let me calm down. Yeah. Uh, but I started I started um, like couch surfing at friends' houses. This this mm-hmm. and that. Uh, started getting jobs. I had three jobs at one point. Mm-hmm. I got lucky enough. I got extremely blessed where I was. I turned eighteen. Uh, I was working at the gym as well. Mm-hmm. They knew my situation a little bit. Mm-hmm. And they allowed me to rent the house out mm. at extremely cheap, yeah. like super cheap. Yeah. Rented that house for a few years. Finally, the lady said, hey, you know what? We don't I want to get rid of it. So she sold me the house. Mm. And that's when I bought my first house. You know, oh, yeah. I was uh, 19, 20. Yeah. Got my first house. Um, the gym provided me a car. So I started, I, st- I started doing better with my life mm-hmm. at some point. Yeah. And then my mom got hit with cancer. Mm. And that one, that one hit me hard. What was that like for you? <sighs> Had you been talking to her? Like, cause you said, you said, you oh yeah, I'm sorry. Separated from your family. Yeah. My family bit. completely disowned me yeah. except for my mom. Ah, okay. So you're it's, talking to your mom. Yes. Okay, got except it. for my mom, my brothers, my dad, they didn't want nothing to do with me. They stopped yeah. talking to me. They were just, I don't know what was going on through their mind, but they didn't want nothing to do with me mm-hmm. at the time. Right. Um, that my throughout the entire process, my mom was still there for me. Mm-hmm. You know, she'll bring me food. She'll come over to the house. She'll, she knew that I was training and working on stop. And yeah. I don't even know why I was training. No, okay, so at this I w- point, I you, was, were, you were training for fighting. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. It mm-hmm. was more of like a hobby. Mm. You know, I was training just to, because I, I I caught myself like, this is healthy for me. Yeah. You know, and granted, like I grew up with three big brothers, mm-hmm. in a physical sport. I'm mm-hmm. a competitive. I'm naturally a competitive person. Mm-hmm. So I enjoy the competition of yeah. just being there and ha and enjoying the atmosphere. And, yeah. Um, I build great relationships from doctors, janitors, just mm-hmm. all from people all over the world that would mm-hmm. just come train. And mm-hmm. um, my life started moving up mm-hmm. and my mom saw me and she was proud of me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember one day I was working the front desk at uh, fight, fight ready, but at the mm-hmm. time it was called the den. Um, and my brother called me early in the morning, like a mm-hmm. few minutes after I opened the gym. He said, Hey, mom got rushed to the, uh, the ER. She collapsed. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck you mean? She collapsed. Mm-hmm. Like she can't breathe. Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. dropped everything. Uh, a coworker was coming in. I was like, I gotta go. And I just left, mm-hmm. uh, went to the ER and I just never left her side from there. Mm-hmm. I kind of just stayed there for the entire time she was in the yeah in the hospital down to her going to hospice mm. i was with her and she also passed away in my arms mm. it was so I, i've had a lot of tragedy yeah i've had a lot of tragedies in my life yeah but that that one hit me hard yeah um that one hit me hard because You know, having someone, I mean, your wife would know. I don't know how close she was with her father, but Mm -hmm. having someone that 
has that real unconditional love mm. that believes in you more than you believe in yourself, mm. we, which we all need that person. Mm. I think we all need someone that believes in us far more than us believing in, you know? Because mm-hmm. um, as humans, we have doubts. Mm-hmm. You know, even me to this day, I'm, I'm in camp and I start doubting myself. Mm-hmm damn, can I win this girl? Can I really do mm. it? This girl's bad. She's been in the UFC, more experienced. And I have my coaches like, hey, mm. you're the fucking shit. Mm. So having the, that, that you know, that pure honesty. And she was my rock at the time. I was young. Mm. I was ni- 19, turning 20. Mm. And to have that taken away from me. Well, yeah, it took a toll on me, man. Mm. That, w- that one was hard, but... Um, when my brother passed away, I knew I was younger. I took life for granted, so I, I I kept fucking up. But when my mom passed away, I was I was really cherishing life. Mm. You know, I was able to. I was still in a place where it's like, why? Mm. You know, kind of a little almost victim mentality. Sure. Like sure. why? Why? Like why am I fucking going through this? Mm. Um. And. Still with 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 the sadness and the grieving and the lot like the losses like I still used it. I was capable. I don't know how to use it as motivation. Mm-hmm. You know, I realized um, almost like a gateway. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to say an escape, but a healthy escape. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you know, I I was I with with so much loss, I've been able to build a relationship with my brothers now mm. um where they're my best friend mm. that's amazing you know they're my best friend and i see my other brother my brother junior and he trains with me every day and mm. uh something i definitely don't do now is take take my life for granted mm-hmm. you know I, I i take life a day i'm, I'm present mm. a day at a time i have my moments because life ain't fucking easy sure and I just keep taking, you know, I keep something my mom said, just keep putting one foot in front of another. Mm-hmm. And that's all, that's all we can do. Yeah. So. Well, there's an old Chinese proverb for, I believe it's Confucius who says, uh, we have two lives in this world. And the second one begins the moment we realize we only have one. Mm. Right. Wow. You know, and that, that second life that begins is literally when you're telling your story, that quote right there, that Chinese proverb is just ringing true because you know, and unfortunately, right, it, you, you went through two of these tragedies and it was on the second one where it really rang true to you is that you truly do only have one shot of this life. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and it was because I, and obviously I believe, you know, you were very young with the first one and there's, you have every reason it's your brother, you know, like, you know, to bring out almost a rage. Right. Yeah. Um, but then for your mother, right. Almost to bring this, you know, not necessarily peace, but more so an idea of like, I have one life. Yeah. Right. I have one life and it's not fucking worth it to go through life being, you know, just being angry all the fucking time. You know, it's not worth it. Just living life, hating everybody or just wanting to fuck up your own shit. Yeah. Right. You know, like the drugs, all that shit that everyone, you know, talks about glorifies the party. It's, it's so worthless. There's, there's no, yeah. You know, and some people never get that. What's sad is that some people never get that. They live, and because let's let's talk about like the people you grew up with. How many of them are still living that life? How many of them who have seen their friends get shot or their family yeah. members get shot, and they for some reason continue to live in that life? Yes, you know, this is this is gonna sound crazy, but there was a point in my life where I wanted to pursue my career. Mm-hmm. Like you know what, I'm gonna go for it. Mm-hmm. And it, for anybody that knows MMA. Mm-hmm. Financially, it is not the best fucking sport to be in. No. You know? No. We all fucking know that. It's financially is not the best sport to be in. Mm -hmm. And I still chose this path. Nevertheless, I chose it, my Mm -hmm. decision. I'm I'm I wanna say twenty four, twenty five. Is not that, that long ago. No, yeah. Not, not that, that long ago. That's really not that I'm long. I'm 29 now. I just turned 29. So is that when you started training? I was 24, 25? No, I started training when I was, I want to say... 17, 18. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've been training for a while yeah. before you really went for it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, huh. But I decided to put all my, I quit all my jobs and I put all my eggs in one basket. Mm-hmm. I said, there's no fucking plan B. Yeah. This is my leap of faith. Yeah. You know, there's that jump everyone's scared to take. Right. Like, I'm going to fucking do it. Yeah. 
and I quit all my jobs and I put everything I had into the sport. Uh-huh. I kid you not, there was a couple, th- for a few months, I was living off of my friend's food stamps. Oh, my friend that I've known since sixth grade, mm. you know, we used to go to class together and ditch school and whatever. Mm. She, she ended up having a few kids and mm. um, I would use her food stamps and my brothers would help me pay for mm. groceries. I was struggling. Mm. Sometimes I'll hit like the negative. I was struggling, man. Mm. Yeah. And finally I, st- I started doing better, getting sponsors and mm. my life started going up. And I would tell my friend, like, hey, like, I, like I'm not using your food stamps no more. Like, I'm, I'm able to pay my bills now. I'm do, Like, I'm doing good for myself. Yeah. You should be too. Yeah. Like, why are you still on food stamps? Mm-hmm. And I wanted more for her. Mm. Right? Because, I, I, granted, I'm also seeing life differently yeah. at this age. Right. And she, she was very much comfortable. Mm. She's like, yeah. Like, I don't think yeah. she saw life moving. Mm-hmm. Long story short, this, this one friendship that I cherished, I had to let her go, mm. her and many other friends, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm thankful that I'm, we're still in touch, but they didn't judge me for it either. Mm-hmm. They, they, uh, cause I was trying to drag them along with me because you, I don't know if you know that saying, but it's like, you are who you hang out with. Oh yeah. You're the sum total of the five people you hang around. We, yes. You know, like there's, there's thousands of sayings that all, all describe the same thing. You are exactly who you hang around. You, you, no you, question. You, you feel me? So Absolutely. I, so I was, I was. I was it was a little bit after my mom passed away I was hanging out with her I was trying to move up and I'm like man what am I doing here yeah like everyone here partying doing nothing and then they're gonna go to work Mm. and it's again we're here the few days later doing the same bullshit right you know and she's never she don't want to get a job because she's comfortable with yeah I don't want to put their business out there but I'm not I'm no one to judge Mm. you know but I know I wanted more for my life Mm -hmm. and I was stressing because I wanted them to come with me, Mm -hmm. but they didn't want it for themselves. Mm. And I explained this to them and I told all my people, I was like, yo, I love you guys, but I can't be around this no more. Yeah. So I stopped coming around Yeah. and I started hanging around and I made beautiful connections with Mm. amazing people. Yeah. And I, I, I started seeing some things outside of Maryville, outside of Phoenix, this little <laughs> right. bubble that I was in, yeah, oh yeah. you know, and right. I, I started traveling, seeing the world and me, like I have people all over the world now. Yeah. If I call someone out mm-hmm. of the country anywhere, mm-hmm. Hey, I'm going here. Hey, China, Brazil, mm-hmm. fucking Mexico. Like yeah. I can, t- I have a place to stay, Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, and right. it's because all because I'm choosing my circle, yeah. you know? And and some people might call me shallow for it, but in all honesty, I just want better. You know, it's my life. I you only have one, and my the people that I once knew and kicked it with, they still love me and respect me. Yeah, because I was straight straight straightforward about it. Yeah, you know, and yeah. um, do I still go back to the hood and talk, uh-huh. kick it with them once in a while? Yeah, I do. Well, I see, love it's, them. it's rare that you still have a relationship with those people because yeah. um, you know, loyalty. Is, is such a misunderstood term, okay? When people talk about loyalty, uh, most of the time when someone rises through the ranks or they, you know, rise above, the, you know, where they came from, yeah. you know what tends to happen, right, is people around you start saying, who do you think you are, right? Hey, oh, I've had, I've had I'm, those. I'm sure you've I've had, had the, that, yeah, right? But the fact yeah. that you had it still, some people who still support you is very powerful, right? Because those people support you in becoming who you are at your greatest mm-hmm. form, right? Like this logo and this podcast, everything, like it, I, I interview people who have accomplished great things, meaning, just, meaning they're on the path of greatness, mm-hmm. right? And the path of greatness is a very lonely path. And as you continue to progress, you quickly realize these people around you, people who you grew up with, you know, people who you actually love and care about yeah, deeply are, do not fit your path. And as much as you want to take them with yes. you, as much as you want them to be there with you yes. because you want to do it together, they will never be where you can be because they are so satisfied with where they're at, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's small town mentality. Maybe it's just comfort, you know, good being the enemy of great, yeah. right? They're, life's good. So why would you? Why would I ever want to shoot for greatness? It sucks, yeah. right? It's it's, it's brutal. Lonely. It's lonely, it's right? Sad. It's 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 a sad road. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's and then you road. get people all around you saying, as, as you continue rising. By the way, this only gets worse the higher you rise it the does. ranks of people going. You forgot where you came from. Mm-hmm. You think you're better than us, right? Mm-hmm. All this kind of stuff. And of course they would say that because they see you rising to a level that just sh- your greatness shining a light on their mediocrity. Yeah. Where wherein they they say this person 
person came from my exact same place from my, from the, like we grew up together mm -hmm. and she made decisions that I did not make because of that. She has accomplished this and I have stayed here. Mm -hmm. So what is my excuse for this? My excuse is, oh, she's just be going after. So it, it's her fault that she's going there. She forgot where she came from. Yeah. Look like for me, it's like, I, I know who I am. I, I, I'm good right here, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's why what I'm saying, if you got people who are actually supporting you from where you are, yeah. that is so rare, yeah. you know, to actually have people who support you on your path, on your journey. Because most of the time, most of those people, if not all of them, end up turning against you saying, who do you think you are? Yeah. This is why yeah. most people don't ever escape the ghetto. Mm -hmm. Because they just, they look at everybody around them like, oh, I got to be loyal to my homies. No, you don't. You got to be loyal to you and, yep. and, your, and your family dream and, and your, your dream. Career, that's, yeah. that's exactly right. Loyalty being the enemy of greatness. Because why am I loyal to, to people? Me, to me, loyalty is, you know what? I love you. Uh -huh. I'm no one to stop you. Go do what you got to do. That's right. Just know when you look back, I'm right here. That's right. That's what loyal to me is. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm pursuing my dream. I have friends. Recently, Jose, uh, Jose Silva, he just came to visit me. That's a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He, uh. He saw me at the gym and I was on my phone on my phone when I was supposed to be working out. Uh -huh. It's rare for him to ever come around uh -huh. to the area that I live in. Yeah. And he, he came up to me, he goes, Hey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, working out. He goes, You're on your phone. He goes, mm -hmm. beautiful. I love that my my friends that mm -hmm. I grew up with, that I still consider friends, although I'm not I'm not around often, mm -hmm. they're able to walk up to me and say, Put your phone down. Mm -hmm. Go fucking get to work. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I work all day. They're like, yeah. It doesn't matter. Where are you where you want to be? Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him like Damn, thank yeah, you. Yeah, right. You know, little things, yeah. like little moments like that that I just I appreciate, you know, my, like my hood where I came came from just yeah. because a lot of people don't have that. It's like mm -hmm. they get stuck into being there and don't want to move on or they're stuck there, but they're living, they're trying to live this dream but still go back to that. Mm -hmm. Where to me it's like it's not, there's nothing wrong to going back, but just know I, I can't stay here. Mm -hmm. You know, I love you guys. I'm going to come back. I'm going to visit you guys, but... If you guys don't want to come with me and just support me, like, I appreciate you. I love you. You know, let me get to work. Yeah, right. Let me, let me, I'm going to change, uh, not necessarily change topics here, but I do have a question for you, right? Mm -hmm. Being a woman in a fighting sport. Male dominant sport. Sure, I mean, that, right. I mean, it, 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 you know, fighting, right, yeah. is typically, you know, like dudes, right? Mm -hmm. How's that been for you, right? Because I've, I've actually, you know, like, you know, to be honest, like I've, I've, I've been in space a little bit, but you know, there's very few women in it. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a question I have always won, wanted to ask is like, what is life like for you? Right. Do you, do you receive a lot of hate being in it, being a woman in the UFC or fighting in MMA? Do you receive a lot of support? Um, what, t t walk me through that. What has that been like for you in your journey? I get a little bit of everything, Interesting. you know, for and the most part, uh, my, my, on my social media, I have a lot of love and support. Interesting. I have a lot of love and support. I, I get those trolls, you know, that naturally talk shit. Yeah. Fucking right. Oh, she's going to become an only fans girl just because <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> it's shamed on. Yeah. yeah. Right. But uh, granted, I have friends, you know, that are on it. I give a fuck. It's mm -hmm. just personally where I'm at mm -hmm. in my stage in life, my season. I don't need to do any of that. I'm mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been blessed and I'm going to continue to be blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm speaking that into existence right now, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. male dominant sport. I really don't have a lot of girlfriends. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends are males. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it, 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 it was hard because I remember mm -hmm. at first when I was in the gym, I actually said this story not that long ago. Mm -hmm. I was in the gym and, um, this new team came from another gym mm -hmm. from the other side of town mm -hmm. in Arizona. It's called the lab. Mm -hmm. uh, a group of their fighters came over to Scottsdale mm -hmm. Uh, to fight ready. Mm -hmm. And I remember, um, I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to bash him, mm -hmm. but I was taking a photo at the time mm -hmm. and he, he disrespected me. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, is that for your OnlyFans or is that for this? Mm -hmm. Which is not a big disrespect. Sure. But in the industry that I'm in, you, you know, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it was a little shot. Yeah. And being the only female fighter, mm -hmm. I had a, I had a, I, I need these men to respect me as mm -hmm. an athlete. Mm -hmm. Not just as a piece of ass or a piece mm -hmm. of meat walking right. around training right. with them. Yeah. Because they you see that a lot. Yeah. And me, w something that I learned from my mom, because she working for the city of Phoenix, she was also in a male dominant atmosphere. Sure. Right? Yeah. And I remember my mom, she was like, Yeah, you know, they try to joke around and I was like, Hey, respect me. 
granted her English isn't the best, mm-hmm. right? So respect she's the res- res- respect me. Yeah. And I go, mom, it was, it was a joke, right? And this was mm-hmm. me when I was a teen. Yeah. She goes, no, mija. Mm-hmm. She goes, if they disres- disrespect you once, they're going to continue to. Mm-hmm. And at first I was like, oh, my God, traditional, like, old-fashioned Mexican. Mm-hmm. She goes, and I go, so you, what else you tell them? She said, yo les dije. I told them, no ja, ja, ja no je, je, je. You respect me. Mm-hmm. No jokes. Mm-hmm. I'm a woman working. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. At the time, right, because I'm a teenager. Sure. Like, mom. And I caught myself doing the same fucking shit in my, in my, in my, to me, it's my job. Mm -hmm. Training is my job. Yeah. So when they made that joke, I got extremely disrespected because as a woman in a male dominant sport, Mm -hmm. I work hard, extremely hard to be respected. Sure. As an athlete. Yeah. Because you see it all the time. These females come in and out just trying to hook up with the fighters and then they leave. No kidding. Right. All the time. That's the thing. All the time. Like, Wait, um, like actually, so they're coming in training just they'll to, train the, yeah. and then next thing you know they're flirting and they date one fighter and another fighter and they think uh, they're being slick. What do next you call that? Because I mean, I mean, in the country we call that what? Or uh, uh, buckle bunnies, right? Or then oh they, my then there's god, snow bunnies, and then there's you know what? What do you call what do you call that in the UFC? Glove bunnies or something? Like what do you? Shit, <laughs> I don't fucking like, groupies. <laughs> groupies. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, was there was there a term for that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because you know the girls. Oh, gym hoppers. Gym hoppers. Gym hoppers. Okay, there you go. Yes, gym hoppers. Gym hoppers. There you go because. That's funny. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, and that. and I was like, no, man, you guys got mm. me fucked up. Mm. Like, granted, I'm a little hood, so it came out right, mm. and I the, the the my teammate went to the went to the restroom, and I sat outside the restroom, the men's locker room, mm-hmm. for him to come out, mm. and he took a while, and then I go, hey, so and so, I go, can you call out? Can you call him out, please? Mm. And they're like, because if you see me in the gym, yeah. I go in, I train, I do my thing, Mm -hmm. and I leave. Mm -hmm. Like, that is my work environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll fuck around a little bit here and there, but not to the extent where they all, what they all do. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm very professional in in my career. Right. And everybody could vouch for it. Mm -hmm. Every single motherfucker in that gym could vouch for it. Mm -hmm. So, they went in there, they go, hey, Tracy's waiting for you outside. She wants to talk to you. Mm. Apparently, his reaction was, oh my fucking God, I already know what it is. Mm. Like, damn, I fucked up. Mm. He came out. He's like Tracy. He grabbed he grabbed me by my shoulder. Mm. He goes, "I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to disrespect you." Mm. I go, "Come here." I, I was about to say his name. Mm. I was like, come, "I go sit right here, bro." Mm-hmm. I go, "Let me tell you something." Mm. I go, "I'm nice. I'm I'm quiet. You know, mm-hmm. um, I stay to myself." I go, "But anybody that tries to fucking disrespect me, I will come to you face to face." I said, "Don't disrespect me again." Mm-hmm. I go, "I worked extremely hard to be respected here mm. in a male dominant sport." I train nothing but with men. Mm. If they see you fucking around with me like that, they're going to think it's okay and it's not. Mm. I go, this is my job. Yeah. Act like it. Mm-hmm. And he goes, done. Mm. He goes, respect. He shook hands, called it a day. Yeah. Next thing you know, I got like all my coaches calling me, what the fuck happened? <laughs> I was like, nothing, man. Well, I you just, guys didn't like fight or anything. No, just I just, talk. Yeah. but n- no, no one has approached me that way. Ah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because they, they do let me be. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the first time I've been disrespected in the gym like that. Mm. To me, it was disrespect. To a lot of people, it might just mm-hmm. be a joke, but yeah. to each their own, you know? Yeah. And uh, they're like, man, that's funny. They're like, you sure did put him in his place. Mm. It's like, yeah. you know, I love my job. I love my career. And yeah. I do want to be, I I'm, I will, I am a respected athlete in it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So. Right. Well, let me, let me ask you this then. What was your first fight in the UFC like? Because that's something oh, I'm really interested in. I was interested. ballsy. Yeah, okay. Like, tell me about it. Because, ballsy. I mean, you went through, I mean, people don't understand who's listening to this because obviously, you know, I, I, like a lot of people are in the business space who listen to this, right? Mm. A lot of entrepreneurs out here, mm-hmm. right? People don't understand, like, you do not just get to go to the UFC. Mm-mm. You have a long career, a brutal career of fights to earn that position to go pro and then not even just go pro. There's a difference of going pro and then going UFC because yes. UFC is the highest level of going pro, yeah. right? It's different. So, because you, th- you then go pro trying to earn your way to get to the UFC, right? Yeah. So what was it like for you to not only get your first fight in the UFC, and how did that come about? I just give me, Walk me through. Yeah. How did that first fight come about? What was that first fight like? Talk me through it. So before even UFC, let's rewind to my, to my like, audition to the UFC. Okay. They know White Contender Series, uh-huh. right? Um, when I was doing my Dana White Contender Series, I want to say I had been, I was 25. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was 25 years. So my brother passed away. Five years later, my mom passed away. Five years later, I get signed to the UFC. 
Oh wow! Yeah. So it was quick. Yeah, wow. it was really quick. Uh-huh. I just kept, I just kept putting one foot in front of another, uh-huh. man. I kept working. I was grinding. I was, uh-huh. it was grit, you know. And uh, I was going through a during my training camp, uh-huh. dur- and the loss of my mom, still grieving. Um, two years after that, I was going through a breakup of nine years. Uh-huh. Right. So yeah, I was wow. going through like that, the yeah. breakup. Uh, the pressure of, damn, I got to make this happen because mm-hmm. if not, like, this is my one shot, mm-hmm. you know? And that's how I saw it. Like, there's, I had no, I don't have no plan B. I don't yeah. have a college degree. I don't have nothing. This is, I, I, I really put everything I had into this. Mm-hmm. Cont- they know why Contender Series happens. Summer of, fuck, I forgot what year. Yeah, I forgot what year. Mm-hmm. But they know why Contender Series happens. And I was so underestimated. I was the underdog. Mm-hmm. Like, she's going to lose this girl that's coming in. She's like mm. a Joanna in Chake Chake. She's oh, up and cut. Uh, the champ at the time, the strawweight champ. Oh, okay, okay. Her name's Joanna. If you okay. look her up, she was undefeated. She was a champion okay. year after year. Uh-huh. And this girl I fought at 125 was supposed to be the next her. Mm. And even Dana White says, uh, you can see the interview on YouTube where he was like, man, Sure, was I fucking wrong? Mm. He goes, Tracy, like, I put in work. Mm. I fucking, I had grit. I didn't stop. I kept coming forward, mm. you know? Yeah. Even a little gangster in me came out. I was like, let's fucking go. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. And uh, I got signed, and I I was like, oh, my God, okay, this is just, th- this isn't even it. Mm-hmm. This is just a little teaser. Yeah. Pro debut came around, or COVID happened. Mm. So I couldn't even do my pro debut mm-hmm. be- or my UFC debut because COVID. Mm. And when COVID happened, I it was like a year off, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And finally, that's when they started um, kind of opening. Or was it? It was pre-COVID. I'm sorry. I'm confusing my years. It was pre-COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, okay, where does Tracy want to fight? Yeah. Who is she going to fight? They said, we have this one girl. I said, I want to fight as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. I took a fight. A division up at 135 because mm-hmm. I fight at 120 flyweight 135. Yeah, right. I moved up to bantamweight 135, mm. and I fought a Brazilian in Brazil. Oh shit! You went down to Brazil. I went down to Brazil. Fucking off, yeah. I wanted to make a statement. Like mm-hmm. I'm here, and I ain't scared of nobody. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, fought at 135. I won. Mm. Backstage, when they closed the curtains and the cameras are finally off, I just fell mm-hmm. on my knees and I broke down crying. Mm-hmm. I just, it was like, damn, I did it. Yeah. Because that's a lot of pressure, man. Yeah. You know, moving up a weight class, Mm -hmm. bigger girl, Mm -hmm. and these girls are big. Mm -hmm. Do you know who Amanda Nunez is? Yeah. Yeah, big. These are big girls. Mm -hmm. Moving up a weight class and then fighting in a girl's, in your opponent's backyard. Mm -hmm. Brazil. Mm -hmm. I'm walking out and they're yelling, kill her, kill Mm -hmm. her. Yeah. I'm about to die out here if yeah. I beat this girl. Right. You know, but even then it didn't stop me. Mm. Dude, yeah. that's awesome. That's and great. After, and after that, COVID happened, yeah. fought in Abu Dhabi, came back, fought in Vegas. Oh, shit. So you've been fighting all over. You're not just fighting like, you know, like in Vegas or no, like anywhere uh, around. Yeah, everywhere. Damn. Okay. So mm-hmm. right now, I, now yeah, as you said before, you're you're 4-0 in the UFC, right? Mm-hmm. So what's the goal? I think I'm 5-0. and 5-0? and Okay. 5-0. and What's With uh, the contender series, yeah. Right, right. Okay. So what's the goal? Like where? Did, like how? How long do you see yourself doing this? If you don't mind me asking, like yeah, you know, no, like what's what's the future look like for you? You know, I uh, I might get judged for this, okay. but I don't want to be fighting at thirty five. I don't think anyone's gonna judge you, you for know? saying that. <laughs> I don't want to. No, because you see, athletes do it all the time, and these MMA fans they go hard, and they're like, "Oh, you're not a real fucking fighter at heart." Da da da. It's like. I give a fuck. I'm 35. I'm a yeah, woman. Right, right. You know, I, w- I want to be married. I want to have kids. Mm-hmm. I want to pursue a different career. Yeah. But right now, my goal for the next year and a half is to f- start getting closer to that belt. Mm. You know, I do yeah. see myself becoming being the champion 2024. 2024? Yeah, huh? next year. Okay, shit. Have you ever said that on a podcast before? Uh, I. I don't think so. Okay, first time. I love yeah. it. We're putting, we're stamping it right now on YouTube. We're stamping this. 2024. 2024. 2024. End of 2024. I know I'm going to be a champion. Hell yeah. You know, I just got, I, I really got to focus, stay disciplined, and just 
stay on course. Now, let, let me let me let me press on that a little bit if you don't mind me asking. I'm gonna look in the eye and ask you a question. Why? Like, wh- why are you so certain that in 2024 you're gonna be champion in 2024? Because I just know it. Why? You know, I work I really too hard. Know. Yeah. You, you know, it's uh-huh. I've seen I've seen what discipline could 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 do in a short matter of time. Mm-hmm. I've seen what staying focused mm-hmm. for a, a good period of time could do. Yeah. I've done it over and over, you know. I've lacked off, I fucked around in my career and it kind of took a little halt, uh-huh. like stop. Yeah. And then I go back at it and next thing you know I'm fucking shooting, I'm like making articles. Uh-huh. You know, I'm making yeah. articles, I'm moving up in the rankings. Mm-hmm. I went from a nobody to I'm now num- number I think 13 in the world mm. in the um, in the women's division. Wow. For pound for pound number 13 I'm just mm-hmm. like holy shit. So I know what hard work could do. Yeah. If you focus it. Mm-hmm. So I know if I focus and I give it up my all, no distractions, no fucking around mm. for the next year and a half th- which is three four more fights. In three fights, out maybe the fourth one, I know I'll be fighting for the belt. Mm. I know I will be. Mm. And three fights Three fights could happen in a year. Mm. Four fights is a year and a half. Mm. So yeah. I could see myself, you know? Yeah. I just really got to stay disciplined mm. and not rely on that bullshit. Oh, well, how do you stay motivated? It's like I'm not fucking motivated. Mm. I'm not motivated. I'm tired. I wake up in the morning with my body hurting, mm. you know? Yeah. It's like it's not motivation. It's discipline. Yeah. It's, mm. it's, it's knowing the end goal. Yeah. And that's ultimately what, what sets a fire in my heart right you know my purpose my why my the 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 fire inside me is like i see perfect example this morning Mm -hmm. i was in the shower i was listening to um i was listening to something on my phone and uh i i was it's gonna sound corny Mm. (laughs) i was in the mirror in my hotel room and i was envisioning me winning the belt Mm -hmm. What I was gonna say after my victory, mm. thanking my mom, thinking mm-hmm. it like sh- telling my brother we did it, mm-hmm. you know, in the cage, mm-hmm. and I got emotional. Mm. I started crying, yeah, you know, and, and this is early this morning. This is eight in the morning, mm. <laughs> you know, and I'm crying, and I open my eyes, and I'm like, God, you fucking pussy! I was like, mm. stop crying. Mm. But that's how that's the passion I have in me, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. That's that that's the drive. That's that's something that no one could stop me but me. Yeah. And I know if, if if I just stay on course for the next year and a half, like I'm I'm unstoppable. Yeah, mm. you know I know I am. Dude, I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I want to watch that fight. <laughs> 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 Better make it happen now. Yeah. We've we've spoken it. It's gonna fucking happen, right? Absolutely. So when that happens, I'll make sure I buy a ticket for us and the whole squad. We're going hey, out 2024. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, you spit some fire on this podcast. It's been fun talking to you, but Thank I don't want to finish off without at least asking this, okay? Mm-hmm. A lot of people listen to this. A lot of people are going to see this, right? It goes all over TikTok, YouTube. A lot, a lot. We get a lot of views and a lot of downloads, right? But if there's one thing you'd want to leave our audience with or anyone who ends up seeing this story, what would you want them to know? What would you want to say? What would I want to say is um, something that has been helping me, you know, in this season of my life right now, because I'm going through some shit too, yeah. is gratitude. Mm. Gratitude. Um, I've been, I've been in life. I've been hit with a lot of, um, losses, tragedies, uh, things that I personally, it's going to, it's going to sound, I don't think life is fair. No. So for me to say I don't deserve it or it's unfair Mm -hmm. sounds, but it has been unfair to a certain degree, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but in this current season that I'm in, I will say that. Gratitude has helped me a lot mm-hmm. in the season. It, it's appreciating the little things around you, such as being here. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful that you've allowed me to be here. Yeah, You know, regardless of what's going on back home right now in this present moment, I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. And it's something little is just gratitude that could, that could change the perspective, the, 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 the way your day is going to go. Yeah. You know, and I hope if whoever is watching this, if you're going through anything, um, just remember to, and it, it, it is hard to just be grateful mm. for the little things such as the clothes you have, mm. you know, on your back, the roof over your head, the meal you're about to eat. Be grateful for the people around mm. you. Be grateful that you're not sick. Yeah. 
the be breath you're allowed you to know, take today. Yeah. Um, be grateful that you're alive or moving because a lot of people aren't. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I, w- I saw my mom struggling to breathe mm-hmm. and I'm sitting next to her just taking deep breaths like nothing. Like yeah. I took that breath without even realizing it. And it's just like, I'm just grateful. Yeah. You know, little th- those little things that r- really changes your day. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to, I mean, you could not have said a more powerful thing because in a world full of depression and anxiety and, and all these things, there's literally something that no one talks about is that gratitude literally dissolves depression. It Completely. Can, it cannot exist together. Completely. You cannot be depressed and grateful at the same time. Exactly. They're literally polar opposites like fire and water. And don't get it wrong. Yeah. You're, you know, like, I get sad. Of you're going to get sad. We're you humans. You right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's inevitable. But yeah. something that we could, you know, our, our mind is is a powerful thing. Mm-hmm. Our mind is a powerful thing. And when you're able to train your mind to see life differently than what the way it's going, yeah, like you become a powerful motherfucker. Yeah. You become Absolutely. a very powerful person. And mm. um, I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful that I'm, you know, living the life I'm living all despite of all the losses that I've gone through, mm. you know, I'm gr- inst- instead of questioning like, Oh my God, why did my mom have to pass away? Mm. It's like, damn, I'm grateful. I got to have in a great mother. Yeah. I'm grateful. I got to see my brother train and his work ethic. Mm. You know, I'm grateful to have still two brothers alive. I'm grateful. My brother left a little girl that reminds me of him. Just mm-hmm. changing your perspective. Yeah. That could really change a lot of change your life mm. and the way you see it and the way you move in it. Yeah. And once you change that perspective, um, I do believe great things tend to happen. Mm. Amen. So. Mm. I love it. That's a great way to finish this bad boy off, man. You spit some fire. Okay. <laughs> what's the best place that people can get a hold of you? If they want to follow you, they want to keep up with your career. Yeah. They want to see you in 2024. Everybody listen to this. We're stamping it in now together. The Alpha Creed podcast community. 2024, we're going to watch this woman take the UFC belt. We're all speaking. Oh, I just right got now. the chills. Yeah, love it. <laughs> um, everyone, for uh, how can people get get a hold of you if they have questions yeah. for you or if they want to follow you? What's the best way for them to find on you? On Instagram, it's Cortez MMA. And on okay. Twitter and Facebook, it's Tracy Cortez MMA. Okay. All right. So we'll make sure it. to tag those at the bottom. Uh, we'll, we'll get everybody in mm-hmm. contact with you. But thank you. Thank you so much for coming Thank you on so the much podcast. for having me. It's awesome to have you. <laughs>